In this lecture, we are going to learn what is a controller and how to use a controller. But before that, let's first understand why do we need a controller. When we define a route like this, it is not a good practice. What we are doing here is, we are defining a route and then when a URL matches this route, from within this middleware function, we are returning some response. And in this way, we have created multiple routes here as you can see. And this program.cs file is already bulky now because of these many routes which we have defined here. And if we are creating a large enterprise application, we might have hundreds of pages for which we might need to define a route. If we define those routes in the same program.cs file, the program.cs file will become huge and it will be very difficult to maintain it. Another problem will be when we want to return HTML content or JSON content from these middleware functions which we have defined for the routes. So basically these middleware functions, currently we are only returning some text content from these middleware functions when a route is matched. But let's say if we want to return some HTML content or some JSON content, it will again make this program.cs file increase in the number of lines of code. And this is not a good practice. There will be readability and maintenance issues. And to solve this problem, we can use a concept of creating controllers for handling incoming requests. A controller is a class that contains a set of action methods and each action method in a controller acts as an endpoint. The endpoint or the action methods are grouped together in a logical way using controller. For example, let's say we want to have two endpoints or two action methods, one for user registration and another for user login. Now both of these actions are related to user account maintenance, right? So that is the logical connection between these two endpoints. So we can group these actions together inside a single controller and we may call that controller as account controller. So in the account controller, we will be defining related endpoints or related action methods like user registration, user sign in, user sign out, etc. So by definition, a controller is a collection of action methods and you can also call action methods as action in short. And each action method performs a specific operation based on the input that are passed to it. So grouping of actions based on a purpose is the main reason to create controllers. And that's not the only thing a controller does. A controller is also responsible for properly handling the incoming request, creating responses and sending it back to the client. But we will talk about it in detail when we have learned about models and views. Okay, let's now go ahead and create a controller and an action inside it. For that, let's go ahead and let's create a new ASP.NET Core empty project. So here, the template is already selected. Let's click next. And here, let's provide the project name. So I will simply call it ASP.NET controllers. Okay, and we want to create this project inside this C colon ASP.NET Core folder. Let's click on this next button. Here, I will uncheck this checkbox and I'll select .NET 7. And let's click on this create button. So the project has been created here. Let's open this solution explorer. And here we have our program.cs file. Now, generally, we place all our controllers inside a separate folder. This folder name can be anything, but by convention, we call it as controller. So here, for this project, let me go ahead and let me add a new folder and I will call it controller. And inside this controller folder, we are going to create a new controller. And there are several ways you can create a controller. So for example, when you click on this folder and when you select this add, here you can see this controller option. So when you select this, using this option, you can create a controller. But since we are learning everything from scratch, I'm going to create a class. Instead of selecting this controller, I will select a class option. Basically, a controller is nothing but a class. Here, I'm going to call this class as home controller. So it is a convention that in your controller class, you suffix controller after the controller name. So in our case, the controller name is going to be home and we are suffixing it with this controller. And by default, it is a CS file. So if I don't specify .cs extension here, and if I click on this add button, it will create a .cs file. And here you can see we have this home controller class. Always remember that in the class name, this controller is important. If we don't specify this controller, in that case, this class is just a ordinary class. 
but we want asp.net code to treat this class as a controller class for that we need to suffix this controller name in this case it is home with controller like this okay so when you suffix controller to your class name asp.net knows that this class is a controller class and it should be treated like a controller and it should be able to handle the request and send the responses now once the request is received by the controller we might want to do something we might want to execute some logic when the request is received by the controller for that we need to define a method inside the controller remember that public methods of a controller are called as action methods or action in short so inside this controller class we are going to define an action and an action should always be public okay so as i mentioned all the public methods of a controller class is called as actions so here i am going to create a method and it is going to return a value of type string and i will simply call it index and from within this method i am going to return some string value so maybe welcome from asp.net co application so here we have created a controller inside the controller we have created an action now let's go ahead and let's run this application you see we are seeing this response hello world now this response is coming from program.cs file so if i go to this program.cs file here you will see that for the root url we are returning this text response hello world so that's why when we have typed root url in the address bar root url is basically localhost colon port number so when we are typing this root url we are seeing this response now this is not required here so i will simply remove it now let me run this application again and now you will see that we have this page not found message here we have this 404 error that's okay because now we are not handling this root url now here after this root url let me specify the controller name which in our case is home and then the action name which in our case is index and if i press enter we are still seeing this 404 page not found message that's because here we have created our home controller and this index action method but asp.net co application is currently not aware about this home controller and its index method so we need to register this home controller to the asp.net application for that we need to add this home controller as a service class so that it can participate in dependency injection and we can add any service before calling this build method so here we are calling this build method on this builder before this on the builder we can call services and in there we can add any service Generally, a service class is simply a reusable class which performs certain tasks which can be reused anywhere in the application without having direct relationship with the UI. In large applications, we create services for business logic, but we will dive deep into services in the latter part of this course. Remember that in ASP.NET Core, the controllers are also treated as a service and we need to register all our services on this builder object before we can use them. So here, on this service let's go ahead and let's use add transient okay and there let's specify our controller name so our controller name is home controller okay and in order to use this home control we also need to import this namespace because if i go to this home controller class you will notice that we have defined this home controller class inside this namespace so we need to import it inside this program.cs so this is generally how we add a controller as a service in ASP.NET Core application. But in larger projects, you might have hundreds or thousands of controllers. And it's not possible to add each controller like this. Okay, so if we go ahead and if we add hundreds or thousands of controllers like this, then in the program.cs file, we will have hundreds or thousands of lines of code just to add a controller as a service. Right, so instead of adding each controller like this using this add transient what we can do is we can simply call add controller method and when we add our controllers using add controllers method asp.net co application will automatically detect all the controllers defined in the application using this controller suffix so using this controller suffix 
and it will add all of them as a service. Currently, we have only one controller, but if we have, let's say, 10 controllers in our application, all those controllers will be added to ASP.NET Core as a service by this add controllers method. And in this way, we do not need to add each controller one by one. All right, so here we have registered our controller. Now, the second thing is we need to enable routing for the index action method. So earlier, in order to enable routing, first we used to call use routing middleware. So here, let me go ahead and let me call this use routing middleware on this app object. And then we also used use endpoints to define our endpoints. To this endpoint, we can pass a middleware function. This middleware function receives this endpoint as its argument. And inside this endpoint, we can simply map our controller. For that, we can say endpoint dot map controller. This map controller, it will pick all the controllers and action methods inside them, and it will add routing for all those action methods to ASP.NET Core application automatically. And these are the two steps which we need to follow to enable controllers in ASP.NET Core application. Now, one more thing which we need to do is we need to tell for which URL we want to execute this index action method. For that, we are going to use attribute routing. So we have talked about routings in great detail in our previous section. One of the way in which we can define a route is by using attribute routing. In attribute routing, we use a set of square brackets. In that, we use this route. And to this route, we need to specify the route pattern. So here, let's say we want to execute this action method whenever a user types, let's say, home in the URL. So after the root URL, if the user says slash home, we want to execute this action method and we want to return this text in the response. Now, this route attribute here, this is being used from Microsoft.asp.net Core.components namespace. But here, we want to use the route attribute from Microsoft.asp.net Core.mvc. Now you see the error is gone. And with this, let's go ahead and let's run our application. And here in the URL, after this root URL, let's say slash home. And if I press enter, we should see this response, welcome from ASP.NET Core application. So here, when we are typing this route in the URL, this index action method is getting called. And this text content is returned in the response. So this is how we define a controller and an action method inside that. And this is how we register the controllers. Now here, when we are using this map controllers, in order to use this map controllers, we don't need to call it on this endpoint. We can also go ahead and we can call it on app. So we can say app dot map controllers. Okay. And when we use app dot map controllers like this, in that case, using this use routing middleware and this use endpoint middleware is optional. So basically, when we use app dot map controllers, it will automatically call use routing and use endpoint behind the scenes. So we don't need to specify that explicitly. And if I go ahead and if I run this application again, it should be still working. So after this root URL, let's go ahead and let's type slash home. And if I press enter, we have this response. So in this lecture, we created a simple controller called home controller. And inside that controller, we added one simple action method. And for that action method, we are defining a route here using this attribute routing. So whenever the user types this route in the URL, it is going to execute this action method. This is all from this lecture. In the next lecture, let's learn more about controllers and action methods.